So the king was expelled and we had no sovereign above us. We became kingless. And the Declaration of Independence uh, notes that very well when it says all men are created equal. So at that point, if we had a king, would they be able to say all men were created equal? I don't think so because the king would not like that very much. I mean, he gets divine right to rule from God. So since we were all created equal, no one can tell another man what to do, can they? The only thing that you have to answer to is your own actions. We created a common law trust, the Constitution of the United States, wherein the people were the grantors. I mean, we created it. We do establish and ordain. Those are the words. So the creation was the beneficiaries and the government employees. We became the grantors and beneficiaries. And the government employees became the trustees. Now, if you understand trust law, if you accept the position of trustee, then you have obligations to make sure that the beneficiary gets what he has coming to him. What happens if you steal the money? You're in big trouble. The trustee can be sent to jail for not honoring their duty to the, to be tr to the trust. And the government employee's oath of office is their acceptance of the trustee position and promise to perform because no, nobody can enter a public office without taking an oath to honor the constitutions of the state that they're in and the United States. We formed a Republican form of government and which is ruled by law. And here we're going to read it. This is the definition right out of Black's Law, 4th edition, page 824. Republican government. That's number two up here. There we go. One in which the powers of sovereignty are vested in the people and are exercised by the people either directly or through representatives chosen by the people to whom those powers are specially delegated. Henry Duncan, 139 U.S. 449, another Supreme Court decision. Minor versus Hap Happersett. And like I said, this is right out of Black's Law Fourth. So anyway, I'll choose to exercise my sovereignty directly. Thank you very much. Whenever the word law appears in the Constitution, it means the common law. So let's look at that. Under 3, we see in a 16 Am Jura 2nd, 74, construction with reference to common law, quote, an important canon of construction is that constitutions must, or at least may, be construed with reference to the common law although the reverse is not necessarily true, since in most respects the federal and state co constitutions did not repudiate, but cherished the established common law. And there's lots of case quotes cite in American jurisprudence. I just didn't um, copy them down. So, all attorneys at law and law equals attorneys at common law, because every time you see the word law written in the Constitution, they're referring to common law. There's four forms of law mentioned in the Constitution, common law, equity, admiralty, and maritime. And we're not, you know, unless you're at sea, you don't have admiralty and maritime. So, however, if you're under war powers, then you're always under the admiralty because that's the that gold fringe flag that's flying in the courtroom signifies you're under a military flag. So courts of law equals courts of common law. Attorneys at law equals attorneys at common law. Does that mean that a common law free man can trespass on his neighbor without consequences? No. His neighbor can accuse him of a trespass or, or other injury or loss and hold him accountable by a jury of his peers. We live in a republic, not a democracy. The word democracy appears nowhere in the U.S. Constitution and could not, for it would be repugnant to it. Get a copy of the California Constitution from your assemblyman for free, and it contains the source of law for California and lists the Magna Carta, 
1215 AD, common law, the Declaration of Independence, and let's just put that up here for a second so you can see it. Okay. And here we have, as I've shown this before, there we go, Magna Carta, Mayflower Compact, Declaration of Rights, Declaration of Independence, Articles of Confederation, and then you have United States Constitution, California Constitution. But anyway. The Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the 1879 California Constitution, among others. Although the true um, Constitution for California is the 1849 version. Because the 1849 version was voted upon by the people of the state of California, the citizens of the state of California. And the 1879 version was only voted on by um, United States citizens, which would be 14th Amendment citizens don't have the same rights as California state citizens. So if the Declaration of Independence is law, and it is, then I have a right, not a privilege, a right, which rights can't be taken away, privileges can be limited, right? To life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which originally said pursuit of property, because property is an almost must have if you're going to have any rights at all. If you don't have the right to property, then you are a serf, you are a slave. It's only if you have own property that you can accuse somebody of trespassing on your property because your property is yours and you have a right to control it, which means nobody else can come on your property without your permission. But if you don't own your property, then you can't accuse somebody of trespassing on your property. All men are created equal, stated clearly in the Declaration of Independence, means if I can't tell you what to do and you can't tell me what to do, or we're all equally sovereign and under the common law, then there's no reason for all the you know, negative things that are going on today. I mean, how can an IRS agent tax you if he can't tell you what to do? I mean, can you um, have benefits at the barrel of a gun? You know, can you offer a service, as Mark Stevens would say? Can you offer a service at the barrel of a gun and call that a legitimate offer? If I can't establish a tax payable to me by you for any reason, please explain how I gave that right to a group of men and women, i.e. the legislature. It's a well-established fact that you cannot give what you do not possess. Yet the legislature would have me believe that I gave them the right to vote on my behalf and that I would be liable for any act they pass. Read the writings of Mark Stevens for more on this concept. Is it true? Is there any basis in law for having another man force me to do his bidding at the barrel of a gun? Can anyone prove that they have authority with points and authority? Points and authority would be case law, you know, statutory law, and if you go back far enough, you'll find that the supreme law of the land is the Constitution of the United States and then the Constitution of the state that you're in. And if that's the supreme law, try to build an argument for taxing under the Constitution. And you'll, you'll have a very difficult time. Jurisdiction is another word for control or slavery. Let's see if we can find that one. So here we are. Jurisdiction, this is from Black's Law, 4th edition, revised. The, it is the power conferred by the Constitution or by law. Corby versus Dooley. The problem with that is that um, really jurisdiction is control. If I have jurisdiction over you, then basically I can control you. And if I have jurisdiction over you and jurisdiction is control, actually the word jurisdiction, which originally in Latin was oath spoken or pledge to the feudal lord over you, then I have the right to have you obey my word. Since slavery is prohibited by the 13th Amendment 
the U.S. Constitution and the California Constitution.